So whenever I see this reading, whoever humbles him, whoever exalts himself will be humbled, and whoever humbles himself will be exalted. I always think of a time um, I was playing in a jazz band. So I was playing drums in a jazz band in high school. And I remember there was one time I was playing, and I was pretty good, but I remember starting to get a little puffed up. You know what I mean by that? You're kind of like, I'm really, really good. I'm the best thing since sliced bread. And I started thinking about that and just thinking about how amazing I was. My head started to go like that. But then guess what happened to my drum set in the midst of playing? It actually started falling apart. It was the weirdest thing. I was playing and like my, um, the toms that are on there started falling down. My cymbal fell over. I was playing and all of a sudden it just became this horrible mess. It was the, it was the, the worst musical moment ever. And I always think of this because the moment I was getting puffed up to say how amazing I was, was the moment where the Lord, in a very comical way, was like, Andy, let's, uh, let's help you to go down to the ground again. And maybe we have those moments. We call them beautiful letdowns. So those moments in which our head starts to grow and we start like getting that, 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 that puffed up helium, and we start kind of going up and up and up and up and saying, look how amazing I am. Sometimes those moments in which we fall are these beautiful letdowns to be able to come back to what we need to have within our heart, which is humility. Whoever humbles himself will be exalted. Now there is a wonderful saint. Her name is Saint Teresa of Avila. They call her Big T because there's Teresa of Avila, then there's Saint Therese, the little flower, she's called Little T, and then Saint Teresa of Calcutta, who's called Mother Teresa of Calcutta, they call her Tiny T. But Big T, she would say this about humility. She would say humility is the truth. And it's the truth of who God is and who we are. And that's really important because it keeps us it keeps us level so that we're not just kind of up here but it also doesn't push us down into the ground it puts us on reality so if we think about the truth of who god is god is the creator of the universe he's the creator of every single star he knows them by name but he's also our father he's a god that loves us he's a god that looks at us and says, my masterpiece, the truth of who we are. We are nothing without God, but we're so loved by him. Do you see how that kind of puts us in the right place? A lot of times when our head kind of grows and we kind of go like that, we forget that everything that we have is a gift from God. Our talents, our abilities, Everything that we are, even the breath that we breathe right now, is a gift. The food that you had this morning is a gift. And so the more that we can remember that everything that is good is actually only because of God, then that helps us be able to look at one another, to see them as gifts, and to realize that everything that I have is not because of me, but it's ultimately because of God as just being a generous father to me, taking care of me. But what humility does as well, again, is it doesn't push us into, a gr into the ground, it doesn't say, I'm worthless. So sometimes we think about humility where it's like, have you ever heard the word groveling before? It's like being on the ground and saying, woe is me, woe is me, I'm nothing, I'm nothing. And the Lord doesn't want us to be there. He doesn't want us to be up here kind of saying, well, I'm better than everything. But he doesn't want to push us down and say, I'm such a horrible person. But instead, he puts us right here. And he says, everything you have is from me. So you can't be up here. 
that I love you so much. I created you good and beautiful. And so you're not down there. You're right where you need to be. Think of Goldilocks. Not too hard, not too soft, just right. Not too hot, not too cold, just right. That's where we need to be. That's what we call virtue. Have you ever heard that word before? Virtue. Virtue is in between two extremes. And this would actually be a great exercise to say, think about different things that you do or different virtues that are out there. You can think of courage is an easy one. Courage is in between two different extremes. What do you think those extremes are? One of them is being a coward. One of them is when you need to stand up, when you need to, you know, jump into the battle, you say, see ya, and then you go away. But what's the opposite extreme? Recklessness. Remember, one of the best um, examples of this is from that very first original Star Wars movie. Remember Han Solo? Has anyone ever seen the first, not Phantom Menace, but like A New Hope? It's a great, great movie. It's one of my favorite ones. I used to have action figures of it too. But there's this funny scene in which Han Solo, he like charges after all of these stormtroopers and he's just kind of going like this. He's like, ah, like going after them, completely reckless. He turns a corner and then there's a whole like legion of stormtroopers, like a hundred stormtroopers right there. And he kind of like stops, he kind of skids, and he's like, and they start shooting at him, and then he just runs the opposite way. And a lot of times we can be like Han Solo like that. It's a very funny scene. But we do that with our lives sometimes. Sometimes when we go one extreme, then we flip to the other side. And so humility, or actually courage, is this strength in the middle to be able to say, I'm not going to be reckless, but I'm not going to run away. I'm going to have courage to fight that battle, to stand up for what's right, but to do it in a wise way. Another virtue you could think of is temperance. This is, you can think of about food. What are two extremes? I'm not going to eat anything. Well, that's not healthy. But what's the opposite extreme? I'm going to eat everything, including your portion on your plate right now. You know how weird that would be? You're like eating Thanksgiving. Let's say I'm, I'm at your dinner table for Thanksgiving and I just come over and I say, can I have your, can I have your food? and I just like take your plate and then I eat it and I'm like, thanks. Like that's not temperance, that's going above. But if I just push everything away and say, no, I just don't eat, that's just not what I do. It's like, well, you won't last long. So again, there's two extremes. Virtue is always in the middle. I'm not going to eat too much because I'll get sick. I'm not going to eat too little because then I'll get sick. I'm going to eat in a way that is what God wants right now. So I would encourage you, a great kind of fun little exercises to think about what are other virtues that are out there? And think about what's one extreme, what's the other extreme, and then that helps you to understand what you need to do in the middle.